what's up everybody? Uh, today I'm going to be making a tutorial on curve profiles. I made a tutorial about this several years ago, but I wanted to update uh, some of my tutorials to make them HD and maybe a little easier to understand. So to start off, a curve profile is it's this tool that you use to actually make really complex or repeatable edges or strokes uh, with your uh, artwork. So for example, I just made a whole bunch of pieces of artwork here, like a gear, a stamp, um, a bush, and a clover, and a, a sun, just to show you what uh, these are. So these, these shapes are actually very, very simple. So if I click on this bush, and I click on the curve profile and take it off, I'll go ahead and do that with uh, both of these lines. I'll select this line, curve profile. So basically I drew this really simple shape, kind of a cloud looking shape or a bush shape. And you can see it's really, really simple. But then I went and drew this line right here, which has a bunch of curves and bumps and applied it to the shape that I created. So I hit T and I'll select the shape and then I'll hit curve profile and just click on the curve profile and it adds that shape or curve on top of the shape. We'll do the same for this one. Oops. I hit T, select this line down here, curve profile, and then shape. And the curve profile can actually be manipulated um, by the count. So if I select this first one, the outer one, and hit uh, the uh, curve profile, you can see it has a repeat count of 16. So if I subtract it, you can see there's less and less and it gets a little bit bigger, or I can add to it. Um, you can also animate these curves uh, in your time window. Oops. So let me hit T. So if I grab this, you can see it actually is uh, animating the curve itself. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that curve profile just and remake it just so you can see how it works again. So here's our basic shape. I'll hit A, and I'm just gonna draw some jagged lines. I'm gonna hit G and go ahead and grab those top points and then hit C to curve them out like that. And then again, to use the curve profile, all you have to do is hit T, select your image or shape, curve profile, and then select your profile. And then again, you can change the repeat count and you can vary oops, the way it looks, change the size. So this is really, really helpful for creating um, extremely fast uh, things like bushes or gears, uh, things that are normally pretty hard to do uh, by hand. So again, let's look at this post post postage stamp, can't talk. If I select it, it's using this curve profile right here, this little line. If I deselect it, you can see it's just a regular square. And if I click on that curve profile, it adds that those ridges to it. I can again add the repeat count to make them add more or less. This gear right here, I actually have two shapes selected. So if I select everything, use the curve profile and turn it off. You can see it's just a circle uh, cut out. Just a, a couple of circles overlapping each other. And then I just hit uh, curve profile, select this line I've drawn, which is extremely easy to do with the grid turned on. Actually, let me show you how I did that. So let's go ahead, oops. Go ahead and erase this curve profile so you can see. I'll hit Command G to turn the grid on. I'll hit, uh, hit A and just use the grid itself to make a really clean shape for the uh, gear. So all I did was uh, draw a little piece of a line right like this. Hit T, I'll select my circle, hit Curve Profile, and I can just add that to my shapes. And now I have a gear really easy to make. Same thing with the graham cracker. I just added a little tiny curve right here. 
Um, this clover is just a circle with this little curve profile. Again, you can always come in, select your shape, and then mess with your curve profile. Oops, Get T. And I can actually manipulate it to how I want it to look by just grabbing points and moving it around. So I have a count of a uh, repeat count of four for the clover. For the sun, it's the same thing. Hit T, move this, and you can see you can make some really cool effects like spiral graph animations, really psychedelic things, uh, just by animating the curve itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you really quick. I'll go ahead and make another. Um, I have a tank here that I was going to show you how I used it in a real animation. Uh, before I do that, I'll show you how I like to make maybe a saw blade. So I'll create a new vector, call it saw blade. I'm going to hit Command G, turn on the grid, and I'll select the circle shape. And so I can expand the circle from the center outward and keep it all proportion. I'm going to hold Shift and Option. Click in the center and drag, and I'll hit Q. I'm gonna change this to gray, turn the stroke on, and have that be dark gray, hold shift down. And then I'm gonna hit S. I'll go ahead and do another couple uh, circles. And oh, turn the grid, wait. Actually, hold on, let's do this. Take the color out. Do another circle, because we're going to punch a hole through it. We'll turn the stroke and the fill off. And we'll just make a little hole in the center. I'll hit U. And I'm on Anime Studio 11 right now. And I'll hit Spacebar. Uh, if you're on Moho, you would do Create Shape. So I have this circle with a little hole punched into it, and I want to make it look like a saw blade. I'll just hit A. Draw a little line with a blade. I only have to draw one. I'll select the outer circle, click Curve Profile, and then select that line that I just made, and now I have a saw blade. So normally if you had to try a hand draw this, it would be take forever to make it look even and everything like that. And again, just to kind of reiterate, you can add blades to make it uh, really more realistic or subtract them just by the repeat count. So hit W, I'm gonna, oops. Hit T, then W, I'm just changing the stroke uh, a little bit. So now, since because I created that in the dead center, I can rotate this blade. And actually, okay, I'll go ahead and use the manipulate uh, layer tool. And I could just start spinning it just like this because the point of origin is in the center. It's making this bounding box up here because the curve profiles up here. But if it's kind of that kind of bothers me. So I'm just going to move the curve profile on top of the saw blade just because I just want it out of the way and it looks a little cleaner. So I'll, now I'll hit the manipulate layer tool and you can see when I spin it now, it's got a nice bounding box in it. So to do a repeat, what I want this to do is to continually spin. So I'm just going to go into the timeline. Let's go say 72. And if you click in the uh, in between the first and uh, last box, it'll create a rotation keyframe. And I'm just going to type in negative one, negative. 359. I don't put 360 in because it's going to repeat the first keyframe. So it's going to spin all the way around. And we want to right click on the first keyframe on frame zero and say linear. And this is going to keep this blade spinning in the uh, same speed all the way through the animation. So it's going to go all the way to 72. I'll right click the last keyframe and we're just going to cycle to one. So if I go ahead and render that, uh, export animation, saw blade, oops. I'm just going to render it out to a couple hundred frames just so you can see that it continu continually spins 
and the curve profile stays on the animation itself. And it should render within a couple seconds. And let's check that out real quick. So now we have a spinning saw blade right there and it just keeps going round and round and round. So really, really easy, uh, fast way to do those type of uh, repeatable edges. So I'm just gonna show you this tank animation. Uh, I redrew in Illustrator the top part of this tank, but now I wanna make a wheel and some treads. So really quick, I'm just doing this to show you how I'd use curve profiles in an actual animation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the kind of tank tread itself or the area where it's going to be. And let's call this tank tread area, I guess. I'm gonna hit Command G and turn the grid on because I kind of wanna make a nice shape. Auto fill and stroker on. Just gonna make this a dark brown. So I'm drawing a rectangle hitting A and I'm adding points here at the end and I'm just gonna hit C and curve those out. So basically this is where the tread wheel is going to uh, be underneath the tank. And it actually doesn't look, let's stretch this out so it looks a lot bigger. I think that looks more about the right size. And I'm gonna turn off the grid for just a second. Put the tra tank tread area underneath. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I'll do that. So now I'm gonna make the treads itself. And by, I'm gonna hit Command G, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle. And I'll just make a little curve profile. Maybe like that, so I'll hit T, select the rectangle, curve profile, and select the curve profile itself. I'm gonna turn that way down to maybe two, uh, maybe more. I don't want it to be too big. Let me change the size of this tread. I want it to be kind of small. Actually, let me use the grid, I'll snap it to some points and then do curve profile and I just want it to be kind of bumpy because I want it to look like an actual tread so I, th I'll, I think I'll leave it like that and what I want to do is I want this tread, actually let me color a different color so it's a little easier to see. I'll make it the same color as the top of the tank. So I have this little weird kind of tread. I want, to, want it to circle around the tank tread area. So what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna show you how to use the follow path tool. So with the tank tread piece selected, I'm gonna hit follow path. Okay, let's do, let's grab that tread. I'm gonna hit Command X and cut it and put it on the tank area itself. Wait, which one is this? Okay, no. Tank tread area. Did I have it on there already? Okay, hold on. So I'm selecting my tank tread and I want it to follow path. Why is, Oh, to use it, I need to have my tank tread on a different layer than what I, um, okay, <laughs> sorry, my brain isn't working very well. The tank tread, to use follow path, you have to have two separate layers. So I need to take the tread, command G, I'm going to cut this, I'm going to make a new layer by itself, and we're just going to call this tread one and paste. 
because it the follow path tool needs to be used with two separate layers. So now that I have the tread just by itself, I'll select it, follow path, and now you can see the tank tread area is highlighted in pink. It's kind of hard to see. I'll click on it, and the tread is way off because the point of origin's off. So we'll change the point of origin. We'll click on our tread. And let's do follow path again. Oops. Reset. So now you can see I reset the point of origin and now it's snapped on to the tank tread. So on frame zero, we're going to select the follow path tool. And percentage wise, we want it to start on zero. So type in zero. And that's going to move it to right here. That's the beginning of the line or where they consider the line to start at that point up here. And then we'll go all the way to frame. We'll just do like 168 and type in 100 for the percentage. We're still on the follow path tool. And basically all that's doing is telling us from frame zero to frame 168, we want to go 100% around that shape. So if I scroll through, let me hide the top of the tank. If I scroll through, you'll see that it just circles around that um, shape at the bottom, the tank tread. But you can see when it hits the curve, it doesn't rotate. So what we need to do is double click the tread, hit rotate to follow path and apply, and hit OK. It actually changed the orientation of the tread, which is OK. We're going to hit T and rotate it back. I'll hold down shift and snap it back to 90 degrees. So now if I drag through the timeline, when it hits that curve, it's going to curve with it. So it kind of goes down and around and spins back to zero, which is cool. That's exactly what we want. But now we need to make a whole bunch of other treads to follow suit. So to do this, I'm just going to duplicate the tread by hitting copy. So now it's tread two, three, four, five. And all I'm going to do is go into the sequencer, which is the second panel down here. I'll select tread two. I'm going to left click and drag. Oh, actually you have to be in the timeline so you can see the, this effect to take place. So I'll go in the timeline, move the second tread right up to the edge of the first one. Then the third one, I'll do the same thing. Move it up to this one, move the fourth one, and then the fifth one. All I'm doing is left clicking and dragging to the left. So basically all this is doing is offsetting the animation. Oops, is that the right place? Right there. So now when I drag through the timeline, you'll see. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? See how they're spreading apart? I don't have the timing right. So let me delete all those treads. I'm going to leave this in because these type of uh, problems happen all the time. So two things I didn't do. The tread goes all the way around, but it needs to be in constant speed. So the first thing we need to do, select the frame zero, right click and select linear. That way the speed is constant all the way around and we need to have it continually looping. So we need to right click, cycle, and we're gonna go to frame two because the first frame is gonna repeat itself. And you can see when I drag through the timeline, it's gonna keep circling around. And you have to do this with the very first tread because you're gonna be copying and you don't wanna to have to redo the cycle and the speed again. So now let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five. So we've copied the tread. We'll go into the timeline so we can see it move a little bit. Go into the sequencer. Go ahead and move the tread. Tread two, tread three. I'm just overlapping. I could make the spacing look a little bit better, but this it's okay for the tutorial. We'll just leave it like this. So they're kind of overlapping. Now, if I drag through the timeline, they should all move together. So they're moving at the same constant speed and they all should go around. Yeah, 
Okay, then they just go round and round over and over again. So instead of having to copy um, every tread, now that we have about five of them, let's make sure we got all those. I'm gonna go into the timeline. Uh, actually, we'll go to frame zero. I'm gonna create a group. I'll just call this tread group. And I'm gonna select uh, one through five of the tread, drag it into the folder itself. And then we're gonna go into the timeline a little bit. And instead of copying one tread at a time, we're gonna copy the group. So we'll copy the group. Then we'll click on in the sequencer, we'll drag and drop or move over the treads here. Copy that group again, move the treads again, kind of into place, copy again, move those so they're overlapping and keep doing that until we have the entire tank area filled. Copy that. And we'll do one more, I think should do it. And we don't want that last one. So we'll go ahead and select, what is it, tread five? We'll delete that. And tread four, we'll delete that one too. Or no, keep that one. So it's overlapping. So there we go. So now let me collapse all of these groups. No, it looks like a lot, but you see how fast that was to uh, make that. If I drag through the timeline, you can see that they're constantly spinning. Now let's turn the uh, tank, the top of the tank back on. Now we've got those treads that are constantly going, oh, constantly going around. Now let's make the uh, inner wheel, I guess you would call it. I don't know, I'm not a tank expert, so I don't know how that works we'll go to frame zero I'll do create a new vector we'll call this wheel well wheel and I'm gonna hide everything really quick and just just like the saw blade I'm just gonna create it in the dead center so I can make it rotate real easy so let's hide everything on the wheel command G let's go ahead and uh, use the circle tool I'll do a light gray, hold shift down, select the stroke. So again, to make a perfect circle, hold shift, option, drag from the center, make, uh, right there. Let's make it, well, let's see, I'll leave that area. Undo. So we'll make it about that big. We can always shrink it. I'll make a couple more, just some, give it some detail. I'll hit Q. Select that center one. I'm just doing this to change the color. Give it a little bit more detail. Like that. And then for our tre uh, tread wheel, we'll use the curve profile again. So I'll, I'll hit, uh, wait, A, add a point. So we'll just do this, draw kind of like a gear. And then hit T, select the outer circle, curve profile, and then select the uh, curve. Let's go ahead and change that a little bit so it sticks out a little more. There we go. And maybe even, let's change the count a little bit so it's like, we'll do 10. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and move this curve profile now that I've created it. I just want it kind of out of the way. So I'm just gonna hit Command G, hide the grid, and just put it over the wheel so it's not in the way when I'm rotating. So we'll go ahead and make a quick animation for that to spin around. Um, this may not be the correct speed, but we'll just do this for the tutorial. I'll go to 168 again, and use the Manipulate Layer tool We'll rotate a little bit, do negative 369, or 59, is that spinning the right way, I think? Yeah. And again, 
select the first keyframe, linear, so it's constant speed, and cycle to two. So it keeps rotating. Okay, let's turn everything back on. And it's a little bit big. So let's sh shrink that wheel down on frame zero. Kind of put it in place. That looks good enough. Let's play the animation. I don't think it's moving as fast as this tread. So to speed up the wheel, all we have to do is grab that last keyframe and move it over. So I'll just grab that, make maybe 120. That looks good enough, or good enough for the tutorial. Go to frame zero. Let me shrink that just a little bit more. Grab the manipulate layer tool, shrink it down. I'm gonna hit command A. And then W, I'm just shrinking the uh, strokes down a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and just duplicate the wheel several times. So duplicate wheel two, three, four. Actually, wait, let's go back so I can do that. Wheel two, hit T, move it over. Then I'll hit hold shift down and select wheel one and two. And then we'll duplicate both of those. And we can move, ah, maybe. Wheel two. Dang it. Okay. Wheel two, one and two. Copy both of those. Move those over. Copy both of those and move those over as well. Let's, uh, yeah, maybe we can do one more. Fit one more. Not great, but you know. Whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, point of origins are messed up here. Let me get rid of that real quick. Wheel, I think it's because, let's just do those one at a time. Duplicate, move it over. I think it's because I was duplicating together. Let me make sure they, okay, that works. We'll just do one at a time. Duplicate, move over, duplicate, move over. And they're all rotating just because we've already copied the animation or the animation's already in there itself, so. There we go. And there you have it. So it's it's really uh, qu quite easy to use um, curve profiles for complex shapes like this. Um, I haven't m messed with it a whole lot, but I'm gonna continue to make stuff with uh, the curve profiles just to see if I can uh, add some more stuff to my Patreon uh, rewards and things like that. Uh, but this is just a really good start. Like I said, again, it's really, really handy for making stuff like uh, bushes and gears and things like that without having to do a whole lot of work. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. And thanks again for watching.